You know, if there was ever a song, I think I just reinvented it right now. And Jesus Christ, I look like Casper. Like, I don't know what it is right now, but the sun hitting the side of my face. I look pale as shit. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not going to the tanning salon. I'm not doing that again this year. Last year, I looked like a fucking Clementine halfway through the year. And people were like, dude, it's October. There's no way you got that kind of sun. Ah, uh, you're, you're right. You're right. It w okay. You'd be real hard pressed though to find those reviews because they're you have to really dig deep to find them on my channel. But there were some where I was some. <laughs> we know this kick that I've been on with sub ohm tanks. I get it. There's people out there that don't like sub ohm tanks that like to just build their own coils, very Mr. Rogerish. I'm with you. I'm right there. I like to do the whole Teletubby jammy where you kind of wrap the coil around the mesh. It's something new that I'm working on. Give me time. We'll figure it out. Horizon Falcon Mesh Tank. And this kind of pumps me up because I'm telling you with the You Will Nunchaku that I did and that is Spire Jammy, those sub ohm tanks have to be some of the most amazing sub ohm tanks I've ever used. Without a doubt. Now you do have to keep in mind if you are going to be purchasing any kind of sub ohm tank, it's going to cost a little bit of money. It's it's definitely going to be more affordable for you to use an RTA. However, it's going to require more maintenance versus on a sub ohm tank. You just push a new coil in or screw it in, depending on what tank you're running with. The thing is now with sub ohm tanks, it seems to be an industry standard to accept just mesh, which is a good thing. A very good thing. Only problem with mesh is the amount of juice consumption that you're going to go through. It's astronomical because you're going to have so much flavor, so much vapor, so much cotton across the board. This company had made the Arctic. When they first came out a lot of people thought that this was a spire now i don't really know if in fact they ever did do a mod not the it's not the falcon arco that's what i was thinking of i'm sorry i said v4 i was thinking of the arco sub ohm tank this guy right here now i don't I, I never got this one, but I did in fact use the Arctic series as a whole. And the funny thing is, is the original Arctic looks just like a K-Fun, literally, almost on a side-by-side -side comparison. This is the Falcon sub ohm tank, but it's a certain series. And I'm kind of glad because if I already did the Falcon sub ohm tank, I probably would not be doing this review. But since I didn't, and I could kind of kill like 35 birds with 18 stones, why not? That was almost good math. Almost. I'm not gonna lie to you, okay? I didn't remember every single one of the coils because they have like six different variations. I know they have like wood pulp and cotton. They also have a paper towel and shoelace version. Then there's also an aluminum can, baked beans can, flavor and scented. I'm gonna open this up and show you all the different coils and actually rip the coils apart so you could see what's on the inside. The only one that I really know is the wood and then the pulp, but then there's a flax fiber uh, fiber and flax paper, then there's a mesh coil, wood pulp, cotton. Let's just bring this down and be sure everything inside of the box and the coils. Let's flip it. On the right hand side, I have two resin and then the other three are artisan. Now the only differences between the two of them is the configuration of the color on the outside. Other than that, everything on the inside is exactly the same. What I am going to be going over for the purposes of this review is this guy right here. So what I'm going to be going over in this review is obviously the M1, the M2, and the M3 coil. And I am going to take them apart on the inside just so you could see what we're working with. Because that seems to be something that I've been doing a lot of recently for sub ohm tanks on the bottom of this there's going to be a scratch and sniff this is going to be white chocolate covered gummy worms not bad let's open it up and then there is the sub ohm tank we'll go over that shortly pull this whole tube out right here and then on the inside is going to be all your accessories and peripherals it's gonna be a little difficult to read because of the chrome inlay but there you go it does come with the m1 and the m2 rendition there is also an f2 and an f3 which is not listed on this piece of paper these are the coils that come on the inside however there is the f2 and f3 which is not listed on here and you get the m1 and the m2 rendition basically the wood pulp which is just like the regular one, the F1, and then you have the M2, which is just like the F2. If you can't read it, I apologize. It's very, very difficult for you to read. And then everything inside of the package there, and you got a five to a seven milliliters. The glass that comes by default on here is going to be that bubble glass, a prism style, like where it's very, very reflective in multiple colors inside of it. And then you get a regular straight barrel if you don't want to use that. So this is the seven mil, and this is the five. Inside your peripheral pouch, you're going to get a 510 drip tip and a wide plethora of extra 
extra O-rings. So these are the three different variations of their coils. I don't know what's supposed to be different here, but this looks like regular cotton. Let's go ahead and pull that up and let's see what we got. Oh, do I have an idea for that? Oh yeah. I had mentioned why some companies are not making mesh coils and lo and behold, here we go. I don't know where the uh, the wood pulp is, unless of course that's on the inside. This is the M2 version, which is the mesh and the wood pulp cotton. I'm not quite seeing where the wood pulp is. Maybe that's a part of the cotton on the inside, but it looks like regular cotton to me. There's not much need for me to rip apart the M1 just because that and the M2 are almost identical aside from just the resistance. The M3 on the other hand is a quite different story. What they have got going on here are these big ass ports on the inside. There was a coil that I was doing a review on the other day where they had this metal on the inside and then a large section. I believe that was a smoke TFV8 V2 baby coil that is a mouthful and a half this has triple coils on the inside it's going to be a little bit difficult to separate this and get this apart just because the way that it's put together the only difference is really between this the m1 and the m2 is that this has three different separate coils versus the m1 and m2 have a single and the resistances are a little bit different nothing too crazy the one that i'm really interested about is this one right here because the materials on the inside are exactly the same now i'm not quite understanding where the wood pulp is maybe that's inside of the cotton whenever we get a brand new coil we're just going to want to put a little bit of juice in there and there is a lot of cotton in here so you just need to really saturate that up. Two very, very large ports on the side. Drip tip on the top of this is gonna be 510, and it does come with that extra drip tip on the inside if you don't like the resin style. Take that off, you're gonna have a very, very large silicone O-ring. I would have much preferred rubber, However, it is what it is. Let's take it for what it's worth. To fill this up is nothing too crazy. All you're gonna just do is a half turn, and it pops right off. Very, very simple, easy to use. Once again, this is the Horizon Falcon Resin sub -ohm tank. Let's bring it on the top. We're back on top of the Horizon Tech Falcon sub -ohm tank, the resin rendition with the triple coil in it. Let me show you some vapor production. We are working with 74 watts on a 0.13. Very, very low resistance, but here we go. Oh my. And that's using a lot of power. Now I just filled this tank up. After about nine hits, there's no more juice left. But you get a lot of flavor. So it's that trade off. Where do you want to go? Do you want to do it where you're getting a lot of flavor, a lot of vapor production, and you don't give a shit about how much juice you waste or you use, depending on how you're looking at it? Problem I have with any kind of mesh coil is the resistance is always very low. Now, when I'm saying very low, we're referring to anything below 0.2. If you're using a regulated device, then there should be no problem whatsoever. And the differences between this coil right now, the triple jammy, versus the single is the mesh is very much different like very much different. The mesh that came inside of the M2 coil, I had taken out just because that's kind of a thing I'm doing with sub -ohm tanks. I really wanna see what wire they're working with. And keep in mind, anytime you use mesh as an atomizer head inside of a coil that goes inside of a sub -ohm tank, you're more likely gonna have that coil less longer than it would be if it was regular wire. I'm not quite sure as to why that is. It's probably because it's a sheet of metal heating up and it's gonna be very much easier to clean that versus on a regular coil. However, on the flip side of that, now many people take little mini toothbrushes and clean off the coils inside of an atomizer and they just buy another one and mesh coils aren't expensive they're becoming an industry standard for all companies smoke is doing it everybody across the board and i think the reason why everybody's doing it is because of how effective it is but what about the people that like to vape on the higher resistances why aren't they rocking some type of mesh that's a lot of it to get a higher resistance. I don't know if you would be able to put enough of mesh inside of a sub -ohm tank in order for you to get a higher resistance. They would have to do a different type of metal. I would like to see like a 0.5 or a 0.6 mesh. Woo. The coils that come with this, the M1 and the M2, are very, very powerful coils. Extremely underrated, let me show you. Right now we're working with 92.5 watts. Let me make sure that's fully saturated. Holy sugar toenails. 
the flavor. One thing to keep in mind is when you are using mesh in a sub ohm tank, an RDA, an RTA, make sure that all the cotton is touching the mesh and it's always saturated. Because what happens is, is it's so much surface area, so much cotton, that if it's a little bit of dry, it has that chance of igniting. That's not so much of a fault of any company that's making coils, that's just the way that mesh works. So you have to be careful when you're vaping on mesh. However, if you don't like mesh and you like regular coils, I can assure you that the coils that come with this tank are probably one of the best in the industry. I don't know if I would say that this is better than the UL Nunchaku coil, but I don't believe that coil is actually a mesh, it's just a regular coil. The flavor's up there though, man. It's up there and you can see that I'm not getting any leaking whatsoever and I've went through a full tank like it was absolutely nothing. This is for a lot of people that are just starting out that are buying sub tanks or anybody that's just getting into sub tanks although they've been vaping for a while. A big question I get asked is, when do you know it's time to swap out the coil for a brand new one? And well, it's kind of an easy question. I tell people anywhere between five to 20 tanks and then swap it out. However, if you're still getting flavor, you're still getting the nicotine, everything is the same as what it was when you first got it, there's no reason to change that out. Now, don't take that and say, well, Jay said I could go five months with one coil. I'm not saying that because there's certain juices that are super sweet and have a lot of sucralose and sweetener in it, and that's going to gunk up the coils and make it less effective. There's a lot of factors that are involved with swapping out coils, and the biggest one is obviously how much sweeteners inside the juice that you're using. Usually when you go lower VG, it's going to be less sweetener, so it's going to hit a little bit harder and it's going to be a little bit cleaner on the coils. The coils aren't super expensive with this and there is no other coils that I can think of off the top of my head that are going to be cross compatible with this tank and the same thing goes with the coils in this tank that go into another tank. That's I think these are just proprietary to Horizon for what they are. <sighs> I'm going to tell you that this whole thing with sub ohm tanks, for whatever reason, I'm really thoroughly enjoying. I kind of looked at it like it used to be a duty to sit there and have to review shit. That was a sub ohm tank, like, I don't want to do this. It's just another sub ohm tank. And that was fine when all the coils were just like everything else that we're seeing. The coils being what they are now is much more different than what they were when they first came out. So that makes the vaping experience that much better and the flavor hit that much harder. If I was to rate this tank on a zero to 10, I'm gonna give it a 7.5, maybe, maybe an 8.5 if in fact it did come with one of the other coils, one of the F-Series. I think the only ones that originally came with the F-Series coils is before they launched the whole mesh series and that's in the older style of tanks. But you are able to get both the F-Series and the M-Series, one's being mesh, the other one is no mesh and it's just regular wire. I wish I had one here to kind of rip apart for you, for you to see it. You know how I'm always mentioning in videos when we're talking about starter kits and brand new boxes, whether or not they'll be able to house a different device than the one that comes with it. This is one of those devices where if you're not a fan of the tank that came with your mod or if you just bought a mod without a tank, this is definitely a viable option. I would definitely recommend this to anybody that's just gonna start out vaping. Just keep in mind the amount of juice that you're going to use with this is going to be astronomical. It's a lot of juice. The top cap on this is very, very easy to put on as well. It's kind of a locking type deal. 92 watts, here we go. Oh, oh my God. <coughs> oh man, <coughs> I can't do any more of that. It hits really, really hard for what it is. It's got me sweating and my eyes tearing up, but you can see how much juice I used in that, what, six, seven hits? I'd say you're probably going to get about 20 to 35 hits out of a full tank on this if you're running one of those mesh coils. All in all, man, this is a very, very solid sub ohm tank, and I would definitely recommend it to anybody across the board, especially if there's people out there that are coming from RTAs that are looking at an easier way to vape instead of just having to build your coils. This is a very viable option, and I've kept it real. Have you?